you know, we have our, our brand, which tells a story and we want to tell that story and we want to share it, but we also just want to share the best wine that we can possibly make from the great state of Texas. And quite honestly, you know, 10 years ago, I, I would have said Texas wine, but it can be done. <laughs> everybody, it's Amy Gross with Wine For Me at Home, and I'm excited to taste some wines with you from the great state of Texas. I'm in Houston, so I'm always looking for fantastic Texas wines, and y'all, I am thrilled to present not only a Texas wine, collection of Texas wines, but a woman winemaker with these Texas wines. So y'all, we are in store for some awesomeness today. We're gonna talk about some bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. We're gonna talk about a Sauvignon Blanc and Sangiovese. All right, if y'all would give me a welcome to Barbara Lacona of Sibone Cellars. Cheers to you. Hi everyone, hello. I Thank you for having me, I'm super excited. Well, I was so blown away by your Sauvignon Blanc at the Women for Wine Sense tasting that I knew I needed to try the rest of them. And I am delighted to get to do that with everybody else too. So everybody, if you've not already ordered the wines, make sure you go ahead and pop into that link that will take you right to Sibone Cellars, order the wines, use the wine for me promo code to get a tasting pack with that. And then you can watch the video and taste the wines with us. If you haven't bought the wines yet, after watching this, I have a feeling you're gonna be like rushing right over to do that. So why don't we start <laughs> with some Coral Estrellas Pelliot. Cheers. All right, Barbara, tell me about this deliciousness. All right, so this is our first sparkling wine, mm. and uh, we I love bubbles, I love dry bubbles, I love rosé, so it all comes together. Um, we wanted to make this in the traditional method, which is really the method that champagne is made. Um, we've done a lot of research on Petiant Natural, which is the ancestral method, which the difference between the two is one is Petiant Natural is a single fermentation in the bottle. Okay. So as you start yeah. fermenting your rosé, you bottle it during the fermentation and you basically trap the yeast and develop that CO2 in the bottle. So it's a very natural style. Um, method Champenois, which is this actually, and Petiant just means bubbly. So this was made um, out of a still rosé, 100% Sangiovese from the Texas High Plains. Uh, we filtered that wine, made it nice and pretty and clean, and then built a second fermentation starter. So we created another yeast starter, almost like you would do with bread, which seems crazy, but it's almost the same. And we added that into the still rosé and we bottled it. And the actual fermentation, the second fermentation happened in the bottle, just like champagne. So this is uh, absolutely dry. There's no sugar left in this wine. Um, it's got a really nice amount of bubbles, I think. Uh, you know, we are always looking for that perfect balance between acid, sugar, fruit, bubbles, and I think we hit what we were, we were searching for on this one. Well, I don't know what you were searching for, but it is, I mean, it is so juicy, and like you said, just so dry, juicy, and the color is gorgeous. I mean, I was super, super impressed. I love it. I, I'm glad you did. It was, it was a little bit of a gamble. We did the crown cap also because in Texas, we really don't have a way to do sparkling wine. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the bottling line. We don't have the, like the right corker to be able to actually do that cork for a sparkling wine. So we decided to keep it simple. Um, it makes it really easy to open and you can enjoy it anywhere at any time. So we, it's been really popular so far, so we plan on doing this a lot. 
good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Seriously, whenever I ordered it, so whenever we did the Women for Wine Sense tasting, we were all supposed to taste the Sauvignon Blanc. And I said, yeah, no, I need, I need to see some Texas bubbles. And yeah, crown cap, super easy just to pop that right off. Like I said, you didn't have to worry about corks flying. Um, beautiful bubbles. Uh, this is fantastic. I, this is just gorgeous and really well priced. I was, I was really impressed. I mean, I, I need to stop going on and on about it, but I really was. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I mean, we're really interested in Texas wine and promoting, uh, we can actually make really great wine in Texas. And there are several producers doing it. I'm happy, I'm super proud to be one of them and just involved in this industry as a whole. And uh, I love to experiment. And Texas really gives us an opportunity to do that. We have a lot of options with a lot of different fruits. And this is gonna be a mainstay. <laughs> I'm glad. Pears. This pairs really well with a lot of things. I mean, it's great by itself. Uh, people have said, oh, I'm just gonna drink this by the pool. I'm like, yeah, it goes great with food. We paired this um, actually just the other night. There's a restaurant in Fredericksburg um, right outside of town called Cabernet Grill. Mm -hmm. And they have been in wine enthusiasts, top 100 wine restaurants. And they are one of the few places that has a 100% Texas wine menu. So wow. they basically wow. make all of their food to go with Texas wines. It's a fabulous, fabulous restaurant. So we went there last night. We took a bottle with us. We were with a group of friends. And they sent us an order of what they call Texas Twinkies, which is a fried jalapeno with sausage. And <laughs> it's a little bit spicy. And in my brain, I wouldn't think that this would actually go great with that, but it did. It was fabulous. There's like some, some goat cheese in there and it just, the whole combination was just absolutely incredible. So we were really happy to, to find that, that pairing. So let's see, we've got creamy, we've got fried and we've got spicy um, with this juicy, gorgeous, sparkling wine. Very cool. Why don't we take a, a Texas tour and get a little Sauvignon Blanc in our Okay. Blanc. grapes they're all texas grapes i mean i 100 percent. there's wineries that are that say they're texas but you are true texas 100 percent grapes 100 percent. we hope it's 100 percent grapes 100 grapes 100 texas grapes um yes which is so exciting i i think this is really exciting for our state but like, here's the thing. It's not just that it's 100% Texas grapes. It's that it's 100% delicious. I mean, it's really, really outstanding. I, um, I am in love with your Sauvignon Blanc. And it's, it's so much fun for me to um, see Texas have more and more grapes that are grown well um, and that can create some delicious wine. What, what made you decide to go with Sauvignon Blanc? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc was a lucky, a lucky catch. There's not a lot of Sauvignon Blanc being grown in Texas. There are people who I would think would say you can't do it, shouldn't do it, and you really can. I, it, it comes a lot down to the growers. Um, we're in the process of planting our first vineyard site, which will be on our estate winery, but right now we're working with a lot of growing partners throughout the hill country, the high plains, uh, these grapes were actually shared with me by another Texas winemaker uh, who said, I have an extra little bit of fruit. Would you like to buy it from me? And uh, absolutely, the answer is always yes, if I can possibly. And I love Sauvignon Blanc. It's one of my favorite varieties. So I just decided to take it the direction I wanted to go. I originally thought I might want to blend it with a little semillon because I didn't want that super grassy, super kind of super bright. I didn't want to do the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I don't think that's what Texas is. We've got beautiful sunshine. We should show that off. I like to try to be true to the fruit that we get out of the vineyard. These grapes were absolutely delicious. We literally were driving down the rows in the vineyard, tasting the grapes, trying to pick a date for harvest and I just looked at the grower and said look tonight can we please pick these tonight <laughs> because these are perfect um, and we did we harvested that night and um, we aged this in uh, all in oak 
folks. So this, this was in the barrel for about seven months. Oh. Um, it was on lees. We stirred those barrels about twice a week for the first three months just okay. to get that, that creamy mouth feel, give it a little bit of body and a little bit of, of what I think is very interesting about Sauvignon Blanc. So we brought out some tropical notes, um, definitely a lot of pear, and it's it's been delicious. I love this wine. I'm glad that, that you like it too. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you pointed out the difference because so often whenever you say Sauvignon Blanc, people think New Zealand. Um, and this is definitely not New Zealand. As you said, it takes advantage of our sunshine here. Why don't we, can you tell us what you're tasting in it whenever we're doing that? Let's, let's kind of talk through it. I, you know, I'm getting, I, I get a lot of pear on this. Um, this is a 2018 vintage. So this has in, been in bottle for a little while. It was in barrel for about seven months. So it has evolved over the past couple of years. Um, and it's evolved in, in a good way. It's, yeah. it's got a lot of structure. It's got a nice finish. Um, I definitely get a little bit of tropical note. Um, just not that grassy, grassy that sometimes is associated with Sauvignon Blanc. And it really just comes from a, a perfect ripeness of the grapes right. and that little bit of barrel time. And it's got great structure. I mean, the acid is so well balanced on this. Um, and I think your oak really accents it well. Um, I think sometimes people talk about oak and they're worried that things are going to be too oaky. This, you don't taste oak, you taste the fruit. I mean, it's a really nice accent to the fruit. You've done a fantastic job of balancing all these elements. Um, and this Sauvignon Blanc. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely get the tropical fruits, definitely get pear. Um, it's amazing. It's, and I think this is, it's heavy enough to stand up to some, some food um, with some for pretty hefty flavors. I mean, I don't think this is just a pork and fish wine. I think you could even do this with, uh, with a steak, um, with a chimichurri or something even on it. I think would be really nice. Uh, you. You definitely can. We've done a few paired dinners uh, at some local restaurants, and one of the chefs put together, uh, it, our brand is a little bit Basque, Cuban, Spanish, so we try to do some pairings with, with some food that, that fall into that vein, and the chef did a fabulous menu, and he, he actually did a seafood broth that was a little bit spicy and paired it with this wine and it was amazing. I, <laughs> I don't know that I would have even picked that pairing. It was definitely one of the best pairings of the night. I mean, everybody just walked away from that. Like, this is amazing. So it is really versatile. And that's one of the things we're striving for when we're making the wines as well, that you can drink them on their own, but we also want them to be very food friendly. Yeah. So yeah. with that balance of flavors, just saying, okay, we can, we can do this with food, which is a great thing because that's really what wine is made for, to go with your food. I absolutely agree. I think whenever you've got a great pairing of wine and food, it, both of them are improved. I mean, it, it makes such, such a difference um, whenever you're doing it right. And I think it's, it's fantastic. I also think though that sometimes people get so hung up on what the right pairing is and they're afraid to try new things. Um, and I think you can have a whole lot more fun when you just kind of give, give things a go and see what happens. Um, cause you may, you may, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. We've, we've, we, we taste everything with everything now because we've been surprised by a few things that we thought, oh, this isn't going to work. And you go, well, it, it does. It, you know, it just, they, they work together sometimes. And I don't think anybody should be afraid to try any wine with any food. And if it doesn't work, then you could, you go on to the next one. You've learned that lesson and, but you gave it a shot. Absolutely. I want to know more about why you decided to make wine in Texas. I have been interested in wine for a very long time. And that interest started with Napa as uh, probably a lot of people do. And I am not from Texas. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, uh, not a really big wine producing state. Um, and I just, you know, drank a lot of wine, tasted a lot of wine, tried to figure out what I love, uh, which led into just wine education, and a lot of wine travel. 
And I wound up in Texas about uh, 12 years ago when I met my husband. He said, I always wind up back in Texas. Are you okay with that? I said, let's go for it. And one thing led to another. And we had continued on our journey with wine, both of us. And we wound up living in Fredericksburg in the Hill Country, which is the heart of Texas wine country. So everything got more involved. Um, I love vineyards. The wine really starts in the vineyard. Um, I started working with a lot of uh, different growers out in the area, just volunteering, spending time working in the wineries, went back to school and did a two-year program for viticulture, a two-year program for winemaking, and continued to work with some of the, the top winemakers in Texas. And what I realized in doing my first harvest in 2016 was I love the vineyard, but I love making wine. Yeah. And so we're... <laughs> in the location where I could actually attempt to do that, uh, along with the help of uh, a lot of local winemakers giving me space to to store barrels and to borrow equipment. Um, This has definitely been a labor of love and a a passion project. So we're really excited to see it grow a little bit bigger. Absolutely. Okay, so I want us to get onto the Sangiovese, Um, getting red here. We started with California wines, you know, as I was younger, and then moved into French wines as I was being more educated. And I love, I love Bordeaux. I love Bordeaux wines. So we do, we are working with a lot of Bordeaux varietals. Um, We have a, a project that we call our solo project, which is our single Italian (laughs) variety. Um, For this vintage, it is Sangiovese. In 2017, it was Nebbiolo, which nobody in Texas knows what that is, but (laughs) it was delicious. (laughs) Um, We couldn't get Nebbiolo, so we have just decided that whatever Italian varietal we can get our hands on, we're finding that they actually perform really well in Texas vineyards. They work well with our climate. Um, I'm super impressed by them. So the Sangiovese, we harvested um, from two different vineyards. Um, We aged it separately in uh, almost all neutral French oak. This is so good. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I I was waiting to taste it with you, and I just got a little over. This is delicious. I'm so excited for for you and for Texas wine. (laughs) This is, oh my goodness, outstanding. Cheers. Okay, Texas right. can do it. Yeah, <laughs> Texas can do it. So we went with the, the Sangiovese. So, you know, our, our brand is sort of Basque. Laquona is a, a name that comes from, from Basque. My husband's father was born in Havana, Cuba, and he came to the United States. He was a, an Olympic gymnast. He was recruited by Florida State. So he was here for a long time, became a political science major. And okay, a I, I have a, but I don't know. I I am a Florida Gator, so I'm trying really hard to <laughs> hold back here. But um, okay, all right, okay. Florida State, uh, I'll deal with that. But you know, it, he, it, it, that brought him into the country. Sorry. That brought him into the country, <laughs> which led to this wine. So brought him into the country. Um, our, our our name Sibone is actually the name of an old Cuban love song. Um, it was written in the 1920s by my husband's great uncle, who was a prolific, uh, he was an amazing musician, amazing pianist. He wrote over 300 songs. He, his music has been in Hollywood movies. He was nominated for an Oscar, blah, 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 blah. But Sibonet was one of our favorite songs. It's a love song. And our whole story is a love story. It's a, a love story for each other, our friends, our family, and our wine. And that's it. For us, wine brings everybody together. That is also what it's meant for, which is also what you know family meals are meant for. Um, so we have always that in mind, um, some Cuban dishes, Spanish dishes, when we're making them, how will this pair? What can we do with this? Um, but we're also following what the grapes tell us. Um, we pick these grapes, we taste it all through the process and decide, this is the best way to deal with them. So for this Sangiovese, uh, we didn't really have a plan to do Italian varietals, but <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it is. It, it really is awesome. <laughs> but I had to 
laugh how you're telling me that your brand is, you know, it's Cuban and Basque <laughs> and, and then, and then San Jovese. And I'm thinking, okay, how, how is this going to all play in? It's the true moment just happens. right here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. And, you know, on one hand, we're, we're, you know, we have our, our brand, which tells a story and we want to tell that story and we want to share it. But we also just want to share the best wine that we can possibly make from the great state of Texas. And quite honestly, you know, 10 years ago, I, I would have said Texas wine, no. but it can be done. This <laughs> this it's outstanding. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back again. Yeah, let's have a sip. Hold on. Seriously, so fantastic. So fantastic. Like, I thank you. I'm really excited. I got to figure out what I'm making for dinner tonight. I, I have a lot of options here to think about. Bolognese goes great with bolognese. <laughs> Yes, all those flavors. Yes, yes. It really does. Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now you got me going, okay. Favorite um, pairing. <laughs> that's your favorite. Is there, is there a specific bolognese recipe that you love? Mm, yes. yes. Uh, Emerald has a spaghetti bolognese recipe that is my go-to, and I play around with it a little bit. It is delicious. You cannot go wrong. A lot of ingredients, lots of steps. It is well worth the time worth it. Okay. And I'm just, just because you grow grapes and you buy grapes and you got this agriculture thing, do you grow other vegetables to go into your cooking or, or not? I'm just wondering. We, we have a small, you know, backyard garden. So, you know, some tomatoes, uh, a lot of herbs, um, those kind of things. We don't have a lot of room to do that, but uh, as we actually plant our own vineyards, that is part of our plan to have a, a bigger garden area so that we can actually grow awesome. some of the things and, and do some pairings. Yeah, so we we just, yeah, I feel really cool because now I actually have basil and oregano and uh, lemongrass. Like I have like four things that my daughter is planting. Um, and I just feel so cool. I'm like, could you please go harvest the basil for me so that I can throw it on the pasta? <laughs> okay, I do wanna ask you the flower in your, um, on your label, what is that flower? Oh, so actually the flower, I, I don't, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see it that great on there. So this flower uh -huh. is actually a photograph that my husband took. This is a new bud break of a grapevine. So this is a Merlot vine from Bordeaux, France. It is a 40-year-old a vine. This uh -huh. was a 40-year-old vine, new bud break in 2006. And it was a photograph that he had taken. He spent some time in Bordeaux and we have this on our wall and we are actually using it on our label to represent one, our love of Bordeaux, because we do love it. I actually love Merlot. I believe Merlot is due for a comeback. It's well time that people stop hating on Merlot, um, but it's actually really used to represent that you can renew at any time in your life. Uh, you know, a 40 year old vine, this is new growth. We started this project later in our lives and we just use it to represent that you can start anything that you want, any project at any time and have it bloom. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. Oh my gosh. There's so many things. I'm just going, I'm just gushing here. Um, I do want to take, so when did you come to Texas? Like whenever you came to Texas and you were returning your, your husband knew that he'd, he'd be back, and so you love him. So you're like, okay, I'm going back too. Um, but did you go back to Texas knowing that you were going to start making wine, or did you come back to Texas and then decide to start making wine? We came back to Texas, and uh, I think we were both really just, you know, working our regular jobs. And uh, the, the, the whole story is we were living in San Antonio. And uh, my husband had his corporate job. He was, he's a marketing, uh, he's a marketing person. And uh, he's also a photographer and also loves wine. So in his office, he had a lot of pictures of wine tastings, of bottles, of France, of different things. And uh, one day a gentleman came in to actually fix the air conditioning. He was an electrician, saw the pictures and said, oh, you're a photographer, you like wine. 
Next day he came back and he said, I have two friends who are starting a new winery up in the Fredericksburg area and they've, they've got their first wine. They don't have a website. They don't know how to do anything like that. Would you be interested in helping them? And he said, sure. And we said, Texas wine, it's not going to be good. Um, but he went up, he met with them, tasted their wine, brought a bottle home and said, wow, this, this is going to be a thing. This was about 10 years ago. And uh, it turned out that that winery was William, William Chris, uh, which is in high Texas, yeah. which if you haven't heard, heard of them, they're amazing. Yes. Um, so they became great friends of ours. They became, he did a lot of work for them and that led to more work out here which led to him quitting his corporate job and we moved to Fredericksburg. Once we got here, I said, okay, now I'm here. I can actually pursue all these things that I've thought my entire life that I really want to be more involved in. So I started in the vineyards and in the wineries and then going back to school to actually learn, you know, the chemistry and there's, there's really a lot that goes into it. So that was beneficial, but bringing, that's what brought us here. Um, still great friends of ours and just it's a great community out here so if anybody has not visited Fredericksburg High Johnson City come out and see contact me I'll tell you the most fabulous places to go there are really really beautiful things being done out here oh I'm so glad to hear that I haven't been in the Texas wine country except for real quick meetings and that sort of thing and I am so eager to go and really get Get my get some dirt under my fingernails and you know and and also do some tastings and, and really get to know it better um the last couple of months have been fantastic for me since you know pace has been a little slower so to be home <laughs> and um explore texas wine i've had a really good time and william chris is one that i um knew nothing about i'm embarrassed to say that um it was actually a winemaker in the finger lakes peter bell with fox run that said oh you need to talk to william chris um and then their winery owner also said you need to talk to william chris and and so i did we did a couple of their virtual tastings and i've been really impressed um yeah so that's great that, that so that's who brought you here so we have them to thank for getting you going and it's true and the, and they honestly they've they've helped a lot of people get here um, and it's one of the, the other things that, you know, I love wine, I love Texas wine, but the, the wine community is so uplifting. I mean, everybody is really here for each other. I don't think any of us can really do it on our own. It's, it is a lot of work. We love it. it it's, I can't, I, I'm so happy to be involved in this industry, but so happy that all of the winemakers out here are so supportive um, we talk, we collaborate, we'll do different things. I would never have gotten this Sauvignon Blanc grapes without the help of another winemaker. Um, we both made Sauv Blanc, they're both different. And then it's great to be able to say, what did you do? This is what I did. And we taste them side by side and say, well, I like mine better. So <laughs> it's, it's, it just, it makes it, it makes it a lot of fun, you know, in addition to, you know, being able to do something that, that I'm really passionate about, it, it's great to be able to make these friends and, and meet people like you and, and the people who come in for tastings and taste the wine. That's it. You know, that's all we want to hear is, yeah, I really like this. This tastes great. That's, that's the whole thing. Aww, that's everything. Okay. And aren't you right now, until you're finished, you're, you're with another winery um, on the same property until yours is built up, right? We're actually, this year we're on three different properties. Uh, <laughs> we started out, uh, we started in 2017 um, with friends of ours who had started a winery in 2004. And they actually got started with the help of William Chris. Um, the first year that they actually made wine was a drought year. It was very hard to get, to get any grapes. And they only made wine that year um, because William Chris had a little bit of extra fruit that they said, oh. here, you know, take this and do something. So they've paid it forward in a big way with us, um, allowing us to make wine at their facility. And they have a great, uh, actually, limestone, a natural limestone cave. Um, so that's where our, our, most of our barrels are, are still aging right now. Um, our, our, almost our entire 2019 vintage is still there. 
Um, and then this year we, we outgrew that. We were taking too much of their space. We've increased our production. So we're working with another winery in Texas, um, John Rivenberg, who was the winemaker at Bending Branch for a long time. He is kind of the Johnny Appleseed of Tanat. If you've not tasted a Tanat that he's made, you are missing out. Um, he has taken over a winery in Kerrville. So we did our harvest with, with him this year in Kerrville. Um, so, and then we have another location where we're aging all of our barrels for 2020. So this year's been, you know, it's been a lot of work. We're running around a lot of places, uh, making sure everything's good, but we're in the process of building our own site in Johnson City, um, right outside of Fredericksburg. So we have about 52 acres. We're planting three acres of Merlot. I'm bringing Merlot right. back. You're bringing it back. You're bringing it back. I'm You're bringing back. It. Amazing. Um, we're starting with that uh, and we're building our full production facility in a barrel room and a tasting room, which uh, should be ready hopefully spring of next year. Super cool. 